Hi, and welcome to the five minute check in. Well, there was an interesting article published in the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine that really took a close look at how are we using race and ethnicity in looking at pulmonary function, function tests. As with EGFR, Common Spirit is taking a close look at how race and ethnicity is used in various calculators, and we're trying to lead the way in adjusting that when necessary. So to help me in this conversation today, we have Dr. Thomas Vendegna, who is a pulmonary critical care uh, and CMO at French Hospital in California, and he's going to help us think this through a little bit. So thanks for joining me today, Tom. Hey, glad to be here, Tom. Great. Now we got the two Toms on here. So let, let's jump into this a little bit. You know, I wanted to kind of just step back a little bit. Where do we see most pulmonary function tests being ordered in general? Sort of the 80, 20 percent, like 70 percent of all PFTs are ordered to evaluate. How would you end that sentence? Yeah, pulmonary function tests usually are ordered for, you know, symptoms, um, sometimes like cough, shortness of breath. But also, you know, you're looking for patterns in pulmonary function tests. So there's three main patterns, as you already know, is there's the obstructive pattern um, secondary to tobacco, which is COPD. There's uh, airflow limitation, which is obstruction with reversibility, which is asthma. And -hmm. then there's a restrictive pattern where the lungs are small and you correlate that with an X-ray and you have interstitial lung disease. So we look at patterns. But then we also follow those diseases with the pulmonary function test over time to see if things are worsening. And finally, I would say that we use this as well to preoperatively clearance uh, patients for surgery. Wow. Okay, great. So diagnostic workup actually follow to see if the therapeutic interventions might be helping or the patient is worsening. And then pre-op clearance. So big three categories. And so that that frames us a little bit in terms of this conversation. So summarize this article for us and how was race or is race being used in ethnicity as we look at the results of pulmonary function tests? So when you have to kind of take a step back, Tom. So pulmonary function tests were actually developed post-Civil War, and they looked at groups of populations. And, you know, within these populations, they set the normal reference range. And that never sat well with some people, and and, and appropriately so, because when we looked at that, was it really race that was affecting how the normals were valued, or was it socioeconomic factors? So this group um, uh, that the American Thoracic Society developed really wanted to look at that based on data that they were looking at post-Civil War and on up. And, And they actually kind of said, that maybe race is not the factor is, you know, as much of a factor here, and we should just treat everyone the same. And right. what is low is actually disease. So in doing that, and you kind of said we have one uh, normal value, it, it actually shifts the normal value a little bit, because now you've added everyone into the pot, into one big grouping and, and shifts the, what we consider to be normal. Is that accurate to say? Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, what was previously thought as normal for mainly the African-American population actually shifts them up a little bit as far as normal. So the Mm -hmm. normal shifted up for them. So let's talk about the impact of this. Uh, What is this going to do uh, potentially uh, as some patients come in now that, you know, one, they might've been normal, now they're considered abnormal or the other way around, or how, how do you think about this? Yeah, there's a good way to look at this. So you know, you it's about 10, 20% of the population, when you corrected them for race, were actually considered normal, but they were actually low values if we did a new normal reference range that was a little higher. So now we're saying, hey, these people are maybe are abnormal and low, and things like socioeconomic development is is affecting them, and maybe we should treat earlier. So I think there's the there's the uh the rub. There's the big shift as some people some people might have been denied therapy or not denied is the wrong word, but not given that option to either have further diagnostic studies or therapeutic interventions and to measure them, as we said earlier. Correct. Interesting. And now we, we you and I talked a little bit about this in the preoperative clearance space, how this has a different potential impact. Uh, why don't you talk about that for a second? Yeah, there's the flip side of that. So now you have people that 
actually are looking a little lower um, when you have a higher normal reference and you have someone you're going to go in for um, lung cancer surgery and you're going to take part of their lung out. So we do a calculation of post FEV1 or, you know, post lung volume and see what's left after surgery. And now they're going to look a little lower and a surgeon may be a little bit more reluctant to take someone's lung out when prior it was corrected for normal. Interesting. So I think you, for those, you, those of us who have been around pulmonary function tests, we know these are sort of, you know, in different rooms all over hospitals and clinics across common spirit. And it's not just you go in and fix one thing and they're all suddenly fixed, right? So this is a big undertaking to, to think about changing this. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, and not all, all um, hospitals have the same machine. So mm -hmm. we have different types of machines. There's a lot of technicality here. So changing the reference range or the normal values on each hospital within Common Spirit is quite an undertaking. So right. we've formed a big group to kind of look at this. Great. And we're going to change it. And we're going to fix it. Um, and we're going to take a closer look at this at a Grand Rounds and really cover all of those related issues uh, on June 7th. So people can, can look at that when, when we put that out there. Um, Tom, thanks for your leadership in this space, and thanks for joining me in this great conversation. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in two weeks at the next 5-Minute Check-In.